after when we're at these events, we end up preaching to the choir. And I'm kind of assuming that most people in this room are for another Europe. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Uh, again, can't make that assumption. I can't make that assumption, <laughs> but you have, to, you have to ask. That's good. It's good to hear. Good starting point. Now, for a start, many of us here tonight are, are likely to understand and believe in the science that tells us that issues like climate change are the real existential threats to humanity and to our future, and to see that it's only collective action and solidarity that can tackle these problems. It's the same with refugees. We know, we know down to our marrow that a Europe-wide solution is obviously going to be fairer and more humane than a dog-eat-dog race to the bottom, where we can dump the whole issue in the laps of geographically peripheral countries uh, like Greece or Italy, which is what has been happening at the moment, and something our government should be ashamed about when it talks about the number of Syrian refugees it allows into this country. It works out approximately at 12 a month. It's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Uh, from employment rights to food stamps, we know that we're better off in the EU. EU. Yes, a reformed EU. A more transparent, more democratic, more accountable institution. That is a social Europe, and not its current default, which is the Europe predominantly on the side of corporations and the super wealthy. But unfortunately, in a country so blighted by the divisive economic policies of the past 40 years, grasping that Europe has shielded us not cause so many of the economic problems we face is at the heart of the task confronting us in these next coming weeks. The historic tried and tested practice of divide and conquer, setting those with so little against those with even less, has thus far been the successful tactic of the Brexiteers. It's why Cameron and his buddies in big business are struggling so badly. Because until this referendum, they themselves were the chief ringleaders and instigators of this pernicious rubbish. They fulminate against red tape, which often turns out to be things like basic rights for workers, maximum, the maximum number of hours that they can be worked in a week, and whether, as a woman, you're legally entitled to pay maternity leave. They rail against human rights as if these were a bad thing. They deny the reality of climate change, bemoan the green crap and the need for collective action to control it. They are led and financed by the usual motley ragtag and bobtail of multi-millionaires and billionaires who talk grandly to the British people about patriotism and British sovereignty, but who happily take American citizenship for tax purposes and who invest their money in secretive shed accounts in Panama. <laughs> If, we hadn't, if the EU didn't exist, we would have to invent it. That's the reality of globalisation. We need better international governments. The outers are undoubtedly tapping into a deep well of anger and disillusion in this country. I've just come from Ecuador, where I could literally, down to the individual, know who was going to be an outer, who might be an inner. And when you begin to talk to these people, and you sit down and have a conversation with them, you understand that they want to kick someone. They want to make the political establishment pay for what's happened to them over the past 40 years, and they're kicking Europe, and that's what's happening. But when you talk to them about the issues concerning them, the issues that are at the heart of why they're voting out, when you spend time with them, you begin to see, you can begin to explain, actually, Europe isn't your problem. In fact, you're, it's one of the few institutions, one of the few organizations that has in its own way shielded people from the worst the past 40 years. So let's take the opportunity in these final few weeks to make our case, a positive case, for a fairer, more ethical and sustainable economy that benefits the many and not just the few. One where we can join our brothers and sisters across Europe who share our passion for a different vision for Europe. One where we can make the case for a social Europe, a compassionate Europe, a sustainable Europe, a better year. That's what, the, that's what we have to do in the next few and final days. So don't go away from here with a warm, fuzzy glow and do nothing about it. Go home, talk to your friends, talk to your family, talk to your partners, talk to your neighbours, annoy the hell out of them. Whatever you do, 
make sure you vote, make sure they vote, and make sure we stay in Europe to change it. Thank you very much. I really hope that's the future of the Labour Party speaking. Um, you know, the last